So today we have Jeanette McCurdy exposing Ariana Grande for being silent about some quiet on set activities going on. You know, so if you're new to this channel, make sure you hit the sub button. But yeah, let's not waste time. Let's see what it's talking about. If you want to go check out the original, it's made by Life Stories by Cool Cast. So let's get Jeanette started. McCurdy's mom isn't even the worst villain in her shocking memoir. She's exposing a producer who took advantage of her when she was just a kid on Nickelodeon's iCarly and Sam and Cat with Ariana Grande. We uncovered the disturbing truth about the man she calls the creator. From verbal abuse and massages to making young actors do creepy and inappropriate... Y'all, let me know if you watched that whole... I think it was like five or six parts. Let me know if you watched the whole thing. If you did, comment in the comment section. You know, let me know what you think about it too. Because, man, it's just... It's so many different opinions out there. But I want to know yours. In scenes that he wrote and directed himself. We knew something was off. Jeanette claims Nickelodeon offered her $300,000 in hush money. Other Nickelodeon child stars have supported Jeanette, but Ariana's been suspiciously quiet. I was angry. I felt unsupported. 300000 First of all, for someone like that to be quiet, you're going to have to come with $30 million. <laughs> Not 300000 Let's be honest here. And second of all, why are you even offering? It's just if that's true, you you beyond guilty, beyond guilty, without a doubt. But it's allegedly. Did Dan Schneider really turn Jeanette and Ariana against each other? I can put them in any horrible predicament I choose. I frequently make the mistake of comparing my career to Ariana's. Every time something exciting happens to her, I feel like she robbed me of having that experience myself. I'm pissed at her, jealous of her. Ariana grew up in an incredibly wealthy, idyllic town with a healthy mom. I grew up in a goddamn hoarder house with a cancerous mom who constantly wept about not being able to afford rent and utility bills. When Jeanette rose to fame as a Nicola... Was that... That was Jeanette speaking? What interview was that? Y'all let me know in the comment section what, what interview was she speaking in right there? Because that was crazy. Was that real or was that AI? It's crazy we gotta ask that, but 2024, y'all. Star on Dan Schneider's show, iCarly, it seemed like she was living every kid's dream, but behind the scenes, it was a nightmare. I'd always been the homeschooled, kind of weird Mormon kid on the outskirts who never quite fit in. So to have that form of validation felt really good. And then it very quickly shifted. I would cry and I'd tell my mom, you know, I don't wanna do this anymore, but she'd say, well, we need this. And then I'd feel guilty. Why wouldn't her mom let no. her stop? That was in speaking. Liz. She was 15. <laughs> Jeanette was the one paying all of her family's bills, and they depended on her. My family was struggling from the day I was born, so my mom put me in acting when I was six to bring in some additional income. I think my mom saw my career as a way out. I lived for my mom. I completely lived for her. I wanted to do what she wanted. Why did she put her mom before herself? Jeanette's devotion to her mom was so extreme because she'd almost lost her as a kid. Who is this speaking? Who is this woman right here? What's the correlation? Why would she put her mom before herself? I mean, let's be honest. Let's be honest here. Most people put their moms before themselves. Let's be honest. You would die for your mom right now. Wouldn't you? If if not, then, hey, teach his own. But most people would, would say yes. They would say yes. Now, rather they would or not, whatever. But uh, I don't know. That's a, that's a kind of weird question. My mother was initially diagnosed with breast cancer when I was two years old. It was stage four. It was, it was a really brutal time for our family. My earliest flashes of memories are a household that was very weighted in tragedy. We all lived in fear of her cancer coming back. And when Jeanette was just 11 years old, her mom should have been protecting her, but she did the opposite. My mom was the person who introduced me to anorexia. I had a lump in my breast and I was scared that it was cancer because of my mom's cancer. And I told her and she said, you don't have breast cancer, you're just developing boobs. I said, well, how can I not develop boobs? I don't want those. And she said, well, there's a thing called calorie restriction. In many ways, your mother tried Wait to- Wait a minute, 11? 11? 
if you if you really listening to these ages, six, 11, nine, eight, it's like, this is not something that an 11-year-old would typically have to uh, worry about, you know, uh, typically. So you have some cases, but to have thoughts like that at 11, that tells you all you need to know in itself. So it's just, it's, man. Child. Yeah, I think my mom wanted to keep me as controllable uh, as possible. I just thought, mom's looking out for me. Mom wants me to not have breast so that I don't have breast cancer. Mom wants me to be, look young so I can book more roles so I can support the family and do the thing. On the outside, I was doing a lot of the performing this happy-go-lucky Nickelodeon kid, but inside it was hurting. It was painful. It was angry. I felt unsupported. When Jeanette was cast in her own iCarly spinoff, Sam and Cat with Ariana Grande, it only made things worse. Uh oh, here comes the Ariana. I think here comes the Ariana segment. But how, how y'all feeling so far? This is already. They could have made this two separate videos. Cause that's the. My mom doesn't. Her mom didn't want her to have because she didn't want her to get cancer. So she was in fear that heavy to where she didn't even want her daughter to have breast. Man, that's just... You just can't control... Some thoughts you just can't control, but how you respond to those thoughts, we have to work on our response. Because this is just... If this is true... Star wow. Ariana Grande is a burgeoning pop star who misses work regularly to go sing at award shows, record new songs, and do press for her upcoming album while I stay back and angrily hold down the fort. Then this week, where I was told Ariana would not be here at all and that they would write around her absence this episode by having her character be locked in a box. Are you kidding? They really were being treated differently. Yeah, but that wasn't even Ariana's fault. It was bigger than just her. Jeanette revealed in her book that the creator of her show manipulated her to do things she wasn't... I don't understand. Is this the cool cast people speaking right here? Like, those two people are just... Is this... I don't know, because they just keep showing these people randomly. I'm assuming that these are the people that made this channel. I'm assuming, but let me know if I'm wrong in the comment section below. But, um, whatever. <laughs> he reaches out and places his hand on my knee. I get goosebumps. You're cold, he says, concerned. I don't think that's why I got the goosebumps, but I agree. It's always best to agree with the creator. He pats my shoulders and then the pat turns into a massage. I want to say something, to tell him to stop, but I'm so scared of offending him. Come on, take a sip. No thanks. Come on. I've never had alcohol before, and I'm only 18. Couldn't I get in trouble? The Victorious kids get drunk together all the time. The iCarly kids are so wholesome. We need to give you guys a little edge. Oh my God. Is that Dan Schneider? Jeanette doesn't name him in her book, but Dan Schneider... So she's reading out of her book right now. And he said the Victoria the victorious kids are always drunk. Allegedly. But this is this Why would why were kids even or teenagers anything? If this is true, why were they even around uh allowed to be around this man? created both iCarly and Sam and Cat, and Jeanette wasn't the only one who was put in uncomfortable situations on set. Mm, I'm thirsty! <laughs> I don't even want to watch this. I saw this so much during the... I can't watch this. That's just... It's just some stuff is just... Ketchup all over your feet. I did not feel safe around Dan Schneider. I feel that I always need to be on guard around him, catering to him emotionally. We can see the parallels in how Jeanette tried to please both her mom and the creator. But when her mom's cancer came back, it became too much for her. Jeanette tried to escape from her problems, but they followed her. You ran away to Hawaii with your boyfriend. He and I sort of began our relationship very shortly after my mom's recurrence of cancer. Something I am grateful for in that relationship is that I was hearing for the first time how unhealthy my mom was. There were some paparazzi pictures yeah. that somebody had taken of us, and then my mom found those paparazzi pictures. She sent me many scathing emails just telling me exactly how disapproving she was. Dear Nat, I am so disappointed in you. You used to be my perfect little angel, but now you are nothing more than a little, all caps, slut, uh, floozy, all used up. You caused my cancer to come back. 
That is disgusting. But as her mom got even worse, Jeanette was still desperate for her approval. Can you... You can't tell people how to react or how to respond to a situation because emotions and instincts are a thing. Now, if they want you to, you can try to help them and advise them on steps that you might take in this situation. Um, so I'm not going to condemn her for uh, still trying to, you know, uh, I guess appeal to her mom, if that's how I want to word it, uh, or make her mom proud. If that's what she wanted to do, that's what she wanted to do. I don't have a problem with that. But, however, I don't know how old she was at this point. But after all of those years, maybe she didn't, you know, I, can, I don't know how she was feeling at that time. But for her to still feel that way after all those years, I'm not sure if she feel that way now. And I think her mom is, um, you know... So, after all those years, she still felt that way. It says a lot about her, not in a negative way. Um, she still cared. So, however you want to view that is how you view it. So, hmm. It's about your last conversation with your mom. Her cancer had spread to her brain. She was in a hospice bed that was set up in our living room. And she was really just detached behind the eyes. This thing happens when people are on their deathbed where everybody tries to say something. It's in an attempt to get them to wake up. And I said, Mommy, I'm so skinny right now. Mommy, did you hear me? I said, I'm so skinny right now. I'm finally down to 89 pounds. But Jeanette's big news wasn't enough to wake her mom up. Jeanette McCurdy's mother has passed away after a long battle with cancer. No living being should... Shout out to the ads. Shout out to the ads. We eat processed food for every single meal of their life. Initially when she died, I was devastated. And then I felt a wisp of relief. And immediately the guilt and the shame kick in of, oh no, I can't feel relief that mom died because mom was my everything. I didn't have an identity without her because she had so vehemently dictated my identity for my entire life. When I first went to therapy, the therapist, I was sharing some stories about my mom and the therapist said, Jeanette, what you're talking about is abuse. And I quit that therapist. I was operating through this lens of my mom wants what's best for me. Accepting that she was abusive would have meant reframing my entire life. And that felt impossible. And Jeanette's mom wasn't the only trauma she needed to address. Nickelodeon offered you. So the first thing the therapist, she said, I mean, allegedly, the first thing the therapist said is that's abuse. I can't really blame her for quitting that therapist. If that's the first thing you do is condemn somebody or it, it would seem like you're judging somebody in a negative way. Um, at first, first few sessions, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Maybe if y'all would have developed a relationship before she did that, uh, or or he did that, then it might have went the opposite direction. But unfortunately, you don't really want to just say things like that when you first meet someone, unless you just don't care. So hundreds of thousands of dollars in hush money. You didn't take it. I think that I think I did something that was really hard to do. I've chosen a path of integrity. And it hasn't always been easy. Following an internal investigation, Nickelodeon stated they'd found no evidence of sexual misconduct from Dad Schneider. Although Insider reported that Schneider has admitted to asking for massages from female colleagues. Despite this, the company has ended their working relationship with the producer after 25 years. Why hasn't Ariana spoken out about her time on Nickelodeon? We don't know for sure, but Jeanette's experience shows us how hard it can be to accept that something you live... Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. The title says Jeanette McCurdy exposes Ariana Grande's silence about their quiet on set moments.
Where is the expose? I mean, you she exposed a lot of stuff, but it says about Ariana Grande silence. Y'all, man, you touched on it a little bit in this video, but let's keep watching. It was actually the abuse. Before you can speak up about it, you have to see it for what it is. I recognize in that moment, oh wow, I'm doing a lot of mental gymnastics here to keep my mom where I wish I could keep could her. Keep her. Yeah. And I know that if I want to be healthy, I'm going to have to not have her be on that pedestal anymore. Were you ever able to forgive your mom for the behavior and for, you know, the issues that it caused? I worked toward forgiveness. Oh, God. I worked toward forgiveness for... I worked toward forgiveness for a really long time, and my therapist said to me one day, So I see here, this is another podcast, or I saw Willow Smith, and I see several people at like some type of round table. Um, I don't know what podcast this is. It seems like I got a lot of catching up to do. But, uh, we got one minute left, so we're going to see if they talking about Ariana here. What if you don't have to work toward forgiveness? And I wept, and I knew that that's what I needed to hear. And as Jeanette faced her pain, she was able to see her relationship with Ariana for what it really was. I was so young at the time, and I think it's really hard to not compare yourself to somebody at that age when you're in an environment around them all the time. So I made that mistake repeatedly. I'm glad to be at a place now where I wouldn't trade positions with somebody. I wish I knew then where I would be now today. I would not have believed it. By recognizing and calling out the abuse she went through, Jeanette made space for others to heal too. Look how many people you're touching and how many people. So, in other words, in my opinion, there was uh, some, some jealousy there. Uh, it seemed like a lot of people was jealous of Ariana back then, though. Interestingly, interestingly enough. Now, notice I said back then. I'm not saying no. Man, it's just an opinion. Uh, but shout out to Jeanette and shout out to uh, Ariana. Um, let's see. Anything else? I think that's it. Whose lives are, are being changed. Facing the parts of myself that I felt the most shame about, becoming public with those has been really healing for me and transformative. And so I hope people consider that for themselves. Alright, if you want to see more uh, videos like this, let me know in the comment section below. Um, if you feel like the video was fulfilled, the title was fulfilled, and she really exposed... Ariana Grande for being silent, silent, then let me know. Uh, I mean, I guess people can speak when they want to speak, you know. Uh, it didn't seem like Jeanette was really, in my opinion, was exposing her for being silent. But she did admit um, that she was comparing herself to her back then. Take it however you want. If you want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comment section below. Um, and give me some more videos or recommendations in the comment section below. Because uh, I have a lot of kids to know to do. There's so much that I learned in this video. It's insane. So, yeah. Uh